dealing with success was probably the hardest time in my life. It created a very large void in my life. I was depressive. I was just lost. Hi, I am Samir Kocha, and for the last 14 years, I have been extremely fortunate to get up close and interview some of the living legends of sport. But today, I'm not here to talk about what happens on the ground. I'm here to share with you a side of your favorite sports personalities that you must have never ever seen before. Welcome to Mind Matters, a unique initiative by Future Generali, where we give you a sneak peek into the minds of successful sport personalities, where they get candid about their mental health battles, challenges, and triumphs over mental health issues that they've suffered. And today we have with us our Olympic star who has redefined shooting in India. His illustrious career is a result of undying passion and commitment. He brought home the country's first individual Olympic gold, but also made it a point to voice out how he had sacrificed his mental peace for the same and would not prefer to do it again. Since then, he has been canvassing for mental health and its importance not just for young athletes, but people in general. We welcome the ace shooter, Abhinav Bindra. How are you doing, first of all? Very well, thank you. Now, we've all seen you as the champion Olympian that you are. So, I'm going to ask you straight up, have, have you faced mental illness in your life? Absolutely. I think that during the course of my career, I had a long career in sport, uh, lots of ups and downs. You know, it's pretty ironic that my biggest mental crisis in my life came when I actually succeeded. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about dealing with failure, but for me, dealing with success was probably the hardest time in my life. Up until Beijing, where I had my greatest victory, you know, I had trained for 16 years of my life with a yeah. singular goal, with a singular obsession uh, that I want to win a gold medal at the Olympic Games. Yeah. Uh, and one fine day, uh, this dream was achieved and this goal was achieved, but it created a very large void in my life. Uh, and I think that to me was uh, a very challenging period of my time where I was depressive. Uh, I was just lost. I didn't really know what to do with my life and what yeah. to do next. Uh, that was probably the toughest moment of my life. Can you just tell us a bit more about what that feeling was like? Um, how, how was your mental state? What were you going through at that point? Firstly, my energies were completely depleted with, uh, you know, it took a lot out of me to win. Uh, but I think uh, more than anything, I was when you're goalless, you're absolutely listless in life. Yeah. Uh, the beauty of goal, having goals is that it drives you. And when that is lost, you lose a lot of meaning in life. Um, and one of the reasons of why we face that is uh, primarily because sometimes we get lured by an equation, which is uh, a gold medal equals happiness. Uh, I think uh, that is absolutely false. And I think yeah. what we really need to do is to reverse that equation. And, and make happiness uh, equal to gold medal. Uh, yeah. And I think that that to me is the most uh, important part. Absolutely. Um, you know, we read that, you know, anxiety was keeping you awake at night sometimes. Did you search for help outside? Did you reach out for help? Of course. So, you know, I, I reached out to, uh, for help, uh, professional help, and that, that really helped. Uh, but to be very honest, for me, uh, seeking help was never a stigma. It was something that I just had to do. And yeah. But post my victory in, in Beijing, I wanted to actually quit to quit sport and, and move on to something else in life. I decided that I will go on a, a 10 day silent retreat where I wanted to just uh, find myself, uh, yeah. find uh, my center again and find my new calling in life. Mm -hmm. And for 10 days, I did only one thing. I only thought back to my sport, which gave me a great insight into myself. And that insight yeah. was that I really loved my sport. And that's how I really found my energy again. Well, so good to know that. You also talked about um, abusing your talent. What do you mean by that? You know, when you're passionate about something, and I yeah. was extremely passionate about my sport, there's a very thin line about pursuing your passion and, and turning that passion into an obsession. Yeah. And at times, yes, I was very guilty of, uh, of actually becoming obsessive about it. But the great learning through that was that uh, in order to achieve success, you really have to take care of your passion. Yeah. You have to respect your passion yeah. uh, by, by A, giving it enough, by working mm -hmm. hard. But you also equally have to take care of your passion by not giving yeah. it too much. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you have to strike the right balance between the two. Any particular instances that you can tell us where you felt you were doing so? 
my f- most successful time in my sport uh, career came when I was a student athlete. Uh, and I had the most amount of fun uh, mm-hmm. and I had the best amount of results uh, that I had because I had a certain amount of balance. And then my student life finished and then from training three hours or four hours a day, that suddenly became eight hours a day and sometimes became 12 hours a day. And that, I think, is the moment where you lose balance and you start abusing your passion and you start abusing your talent by giving it too much. Yeah. You know, in sport and in any high-performance environment, recovery is something yeah. absolutely critical. Uh, there is a physical recovery, but there's also a great element of mental recovery that is needed. And sometimes a mental recovery comes by doing things outside of your passion, yeah. outside of your sport. Um, and, and that gives you sometimes the energy uh, to come back. Otherwise, at the LMU, you will stop enjoying it. How did you deal with the pressure of all those expectations that were bestowed upon you? Hey, he's going. He's a guy who can do it. The medal will be ours. How did you handle pressure? My sport of shooting was a sport which was a lonely sport. But during my sporting career, I always had one constant companion. And my constant companion in my sporting career was self-doubt. Uh, it always accompanied me. Uh, and that, uh, of course, was very challenging when you had to deal with pressure. Because when you have self-doubt, you also have a lot of insecurities that you yeah. have to deal with. Frankly, I, I, I never really dealt with it. I just learned to coexist with it. When you are in a difficult situation, uh, you, human nature is as such that you will resist situations. Uh, but the moment you start to accept the situation, okay, I am feeling a little bit of anxiety. I am feeling self-doubt. Accept the situation. Things suddenly free up and you're able to focus back on, on, on the process. When did you decide that, you know, enough is enough now. It's time to hang that rifle. It's time to say, I have achieved what I have to achieve. And it's time to just... Let it go. My decision to retire from sport was not an abrupt decision. It was something that I planned. I, I took me three, four years to come to uh, peace with myself. Uh, there are many adjustments that uh, need to be made. And most of these adjustments are mental in nature. Uh, yeah. You have to be um, willing and accepting of change. And, and that sometimes uh, uh, is not the easiest thing to do. Yeah. For you, were there any withdrawals like oh my god where's my rifle i want to go back to the range i want to go back to doing what i love doing uh, no firstly i was absolutely at peace with myself with my decision because uh, i left my sport when i knew that i had uh, nothing more to give and uh, from that day uh, to this uh, particular day i've never gone back to a shooting range i don't even own a rifle anymore i've given all my equipment away and yeah. uh, and yes over the over a 20 year career in sport i did win a few medals which hang proudly on my wall uh, but uh, more than anything uh, what has an eternal life is a the relationships that i built uh, is b the memories that i have from from sport um, are elements which are absolutely critical and which stay with me uh, and will stay with me for uh, for for the rest of my life you know it's it's amazing that you're still part of the international olympic committee what kind of mental advice um, are you providing the new young athletes when they go out on this global platform? Of course, I have a few uh, roles. I, I, I'm on a um, mental health uh, working group for the International Olympic Committee, and we do a lot of work there uh, in providing um, support for athletes. And I think, again, it is about creating psychologically safe environments. You have to put human well-being at the heart and center of high performance. But again, it's about finding the balance. Uh, and continuing to have that balance throughout your career. That, that is the advice that I give athletes uh, because I probably didn't do it well enough. And, and that is what I really try and uh, promote. Uh, and I'm very passionate about it. Um, it's amazing to see the amount of passion that you have uh, for you know helping those who are starting off right now. You know, this initiative is wonderful. We're talking about insurance being provided for those who have any kind of mental problems, how important do you think this is and how will this be beneficial to those who are suffering? This is absolutely critical. It is a critical, critical piece. Uh, a, it uh, helps in destigmatizing the whole issue. Uh, B, it also puts uh, mental health and mental illnesses at the same level as a physical uh, thing because I know the suffering is huge and sometimes people yeah. just do not have the possibility to 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 get the sort of help. And I think insurance coming in and giving that support uh, for for mental health, I think uh, is a great, great step uh, forward. Fantastic. And my last question to you is, what would you say to somebody out there who's suffering from 
mental illness, what, what would your advice to that person be? Well, my advice uh, to anybody suffering would be to go uh, and actively seek uh, support, seek help. Uh, I think seeking help is not a sign of weakness. It is actually a sign of great, great strength. Um, you don't need to suffer. You always have a choice. Absolute joy talking to you. Before you leave, I have this uh, really fun segment on the show. We've talked about uh, your life, your journey, but here we're going to just put you on the spot. It's time now for Mind Matters. Time out with Abhinav Bindra. What's your comfort food to de-stress? Chocolate. Chocolate? All right, perfect. A song? Dark chocolate. Dark, Dark chocolate. Because it's even, an, it's, it's even antidepressive, so even better. Yes, it is. <laughs> Would you want some nuts in that as well? Some raisins in that? <laughs> Walnuts. <laughs> okay, walnuts. Okay, I got that. Three small things that make you a happy man. Uh, good food. Yeah. Uh, uh, being with family. Okay. And uh, just being passionate about things. Whatever I do, I have to have that passion. And I have to give it my best. Okay, perfect. Mind matters because? Uh, because um, it's really, it really ends up being mind over matter. I think uh, it, it is a mental game. and We have to get the mind... Uh, working optimally. So I think uh, take care of your mind. It's Brilliant. very, very important. Who do you speak to uh, to brighten your mood? Uh, I spend a, a lot of time with my dogs. Okay. Uh, um, so they are always a sense of uh, joy. But I spend a lot of time talking to my nine-year-old niece. Uh, okay. And uh, she always ends up brightening my mood. Nice. All right. What would you rather eat when you're in a bad mood? I think I know the answer. This is what you said earlier. Uh, ice cream or chocolate? Um, chocolate ice cream. Chocolate. Okay, fine. What the world needs now is? Solidarity. And uh, I think that is uh, uh, the most important thing. I think we have to be there for each other in good yeah. times and bad. Fantastic. My last question to you is, what's the best mental health advice you've ever received from anyone? It's okay to be not okay. Fabulous. I got to say a big thank you to you for taking out uh, time and coming to talk to us about your life, your journey and to be part of this initiative. We wish you more power, more happiness, more success and uh, thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Abhinav Bindra's body of work to give mental health equal importance in sport is inspiring. This just highlights how important it is that our conversation on mental health with our friends, family and colleagues needs to be more real and perhaps more open. Let's normalize talking about mental health because your mental health deserves the same attention as your physical health. Now there are toll free helplines, apps on the phone, there are counselors, doctors who are there waiting to help you get better. And then there are brands like Future Generali that are at the forefront of creating awareness about mental health. They have a specially curated section on their websites which has content and resources around understanding signs of mental health illnesses like depression, anxiety, insomnia, etc. Also resources that can help one manage and deal with them. Future Generali has launched the Health Total Insurance Plan that covers your mental and physical health because mental illness can weigh in on both your emotional and financial facets. You can log on to general.futuregenerali.in slash mindmatters or click on the link in the description to know more.